Hi, it's Ashley from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop and welcome back to my channel where I make a lot of cake and cookie decorating tutorials as well as give a lot of baking business tips. And today it is a regular tutorial but I'm also going to be focusing on how to actually get things done at home. A lot of the times you might see videos that are in a bakery setting or they're showing you how to make something in a studio setting. This is really the real deal and what you're going to be up against when you are baking from home. Now although I do have a lot of supplies on hand, I don't carry as much as I used to. So this often means I just have the bare minimum in order to create a project. And that was the case with this particular cake. I am a very busy lady. I've got a lot going on right now, full-time job and so many other things. So I really didn't have time to pop on over to the cake store and I didn't have time to order anything online. So I had to work with what I had. The biggest thing that I find the difference between working in a bakery setting and working from home is that there is never enough buttercream. You always have to make so many batches of buttercream to equal the amount of buttercream that's usually available in a bakery setting. So something that I like to do is I like to steer whoever I'm making the cake for in the direction of getting a filling over buttercream. Now in this instance, you might be wondering and you might be thinking, well, why are you putting buttercream in between each layer? And this is because I generally go for buttercream cream on the bottom layers of multiple tiered cakes. You don't have to do this. It's not as if your cake is going to necessarily fall apart, but I knew this cake would have very little refrigeration time. So I decided to go with the buttercream, which is very, very stable on the bottom. So I don't have to worry about any slipping or sliding. I ran out of cake boards. So I had to use this cake board, which honestly had a lot of imperfections in it. It was a cake board that just kind of sat around for a very long time and I washed it. And I also made sure to cover it with shortening and to cover it with this fondant. This is just to ensure that everything is very, very food safe and it also covers up any of the nicks on the board. The other thing I was up against was ensuring that I had enough fondant to cover the board and the cake. Now this is a three tiered cake. Ordinarily I have a bunch of white fondant, but I am going to be doing something soon, which means I can't have all of this fondant on hand. So I have very, very little. I'm trying to deplete all of my supplies for everything right now. So I had to go super, super thin on the board. And if you are going thin with fondant, you can only do this if you're going to be covering it with other details, airbrushing it, or using a petal dust. Although it's a little bit tricky to see, you can see how the silver is coming through on that cake board. And this is why I say you can only go thin if you're going to be covering it up. I want to make sure that I can utilize every single piece of fondant and I don't want anything to go to waste. So this takes a lot of planning. White fondant is very precious because it can be dyed any color. But if you need something that is brown or really, really dark in color, then using the scraps from the crumb coat cover is important for that. Now in this instance, because this is going to remain pure white, I can pretty much use it for anything. I'm using Italian meringue buttercream on my cakes, which is one of the most forgiving buttercreams. What I mean by that is it's not quite like American buttercream, which is super, super strong and forms a crust. And therefore, if you mess up placing your fondant on, it's very easily liftable. But Italian meringue buttercream has a better taste and it's a lot stronger than some of the other egg-based buttercreams, so it doesn't lift off as easily if you make a mistake. You can place down that fondant again. You'll notice again, I went really, really thin with this fondant, super thin to the point where you can see my cake layers coming through. Now for my purposes, I planned it out this way because I knew that I was making a dim sum steamer basket, which already kind of has these lines on the side. So when we airbrush it, it's not going to be noticeable at all. And in fact, it actually helps the design along. One thing I will say is this cake board is really, really big. I believe it's like a 14 inch or something and my bottom tier is only 10 inches. So in order to combat that, I could just add on a bunch of decor on the bottom so it doesn't look so strange. However, I knew that there were going to be other foods at this baby shower, which is what this cake is for. So I wasn't worried too much because I knew I could just pack the foods in nice and close so you wouldn't notice how big the board is. 
I love when I can texturize fondant. Again, this is a fondant saver because chances are, especially maybe if you're not that experienced with working with fondant, using a smaller amount of fondant usually results in some sort of textural imperfection. So if your cake design has something that requires a texture, this is going to help cover a lot of issues up. And now for the fun part. I am going in with this canary yellow, which seems a little bit bright for the dim sum basket, but we do need a little bit of yellow. What I love about airbrush colors is that it does layer really, really nicely. Because airbrushing colors don't really go a solid opaque color unless you do a bunch of layers, this actually allows for more opportunity for blending and creating the right color palette that you need. So right now I'm just gently airbrushing a little bit of brown on there, really aiming for the edges and the little divots that I created with that texturization. If you can believe it, I have found some plastic bubble tea straws. I know that paper straws are better for the environment. It's just that these plastic ones do the trick really, really well. But when I finally run out of these plastic bubble tea straws, I will go back to using the paper straws from the takeout restaurants. Again, because we are trying to conserve materials here, I just cut the cake board down that I used to decorate one of the cakes on before. I don't want to waste any cake boards. The amount of cake boards that you see just getting tossed out completely and not conserved or saved whatsoever in a bakery setting is pretty astronomical. And I get it because things are moving very, very quickly. What's a 10 cent cake board to them? But for us home bakers, we do have to be careful about that because no matter how many you buy in bulk, chances are you can't store that many cake boards in bulk where you live. So you've got to buy just kind of semi in bulk, which means that they're more expensive. It might be a little bit hard to tell, but this white fondant actually has a few streaks of brown going through it because it did get a little bit of that crumb coat on it. So it is not perfectly white fondant. However, we can and use it here because I know that I'm going to be airbrushing it. This peach fondant is everything I needed. Normally I don't have a whole lot of pre-dyed fondant, but this was sent to me, so I am using it. And luckily my friend did want this peach color. Now let's say she wanted something more like a pink. I could also take this peach color and turn it into a pink. Always think about the colors that you already have if you've bought pre-made fondant that's already dyed and try to think of how you can pivot to make it into another color. Then go to your whites when you decide, okay, I can't make this into the color that I need, but I can take my white fondant and do that. I know the bow isn't a super popular thing to see on cakes anymore, but I just love a good bow, especially when it comes to baby shower cakes. I just think it's very, very cute. Plus the bow really fit with the bow cookies that my friend ordered. If you want to see the tutorial on how to make those cookies that I made, you can check it out right here in the upper right hand corner. There are so many ways to make this bow, but I really wanted something that looked super gathered and kind of cartoony to fit with the cartoon dumplings that I'm putting on this cake, but also kind of realistic. So I'm making actually a double ribbon in the center here. So really wrapping it around and faking that fabric look. If you've ever looked at somebody working with fondant and wondered why is it working so well for them, my fondant is cracking on me, it's drying out, or it's too malleable, here is the answer. You need to make sure that no matter what, you always have a surplus of cornstarch and shortening on hand. Mixing that shortening in is going to make your fondant more malleable, it's going to give you more time, you won't have to constantly cover up your fondant to keep it from drying out. And once again, it can also help you use that super, super dry fondant that's hard and you don't have any time to go to the store. It can help you put that fondant to good use. Just heat up your fondant a little bit in the microwave in short, like 10 to 15 second bursts, and then knead in a little bit of shortening at a time and voila, your fondant will now become usable and you don't have to go to the store. I'm just doing a little bit of fine detail work here. I could have airbrushed this, but I didn't want to get it super brown on that bottom tier. Again, I could have also placed some plastic wrap on there to protect it. I just found it was easier and I actually wanted that darker brown color. So I took a little bit of my airbrush colorant and I just dipped my paintbrush in there and I was good to go. Again, another tip, if you run out of your edible paints, you can always use food gel colorant or airbrush colorant. They all work. 
and I whipped out my good precious white fondant for this because yes, I did need to make sure that this was relatively white for the dumplings. So I could not use any of the leftover scraps. I used the stuff that I had put aside earlier. I felt like my cake was missing a little something, so I decided to add on all of these little white flowers. Now for this, I was able to push the limits with my white scrap fondant because this is such a small cutter that I was able to actually cut around all the places that had little imperfections, so it was still able to look a fairly pure white. This tutorial is all about using what you have. So, although the look of the original dumplings that my friend sent me definitely used fondant for the eyes, I know that the average person wouldn't really care about this, so I decided to use the black royal icing. Of course, this is something if you are fulfilling an order, you do need to make sure that you are very, very clear about what you're going to be doing. However, if you're just a home baker making something for a friend, Definitely, I think you can get away with using royal icing over fondant for something like a small detail like eyes. And because I made these cookies before, I was able to use that. Moving along, I want to be efficient, so I'm making the most simple roses that I know how to make. You just get this cutter. You can find it on Amazon super, super easily. You slice it in half so you get two roses and not just one. Now, if you do want a really, really full rose, you can definitely fold it in half and then roll it. But we are going for coverage with not a lot of fun in usage. So what I find that this does is I'm able to really bring out those petals more and widen that entire flower, which is going to take up more space while using less fondant. Here is the finished cake. Now I will say that a lot of these tips are super useful in a pinch, especially when you are desperate and you just need to get something done. But I will say it does take a lot of practice to be able to figure out where can you cut corners and where can you absolutely not. Thanks so much for watching guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you can be part of the Sweetie Fam. Right now I'm uploading weekly so make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Also be sure to comment, request, or ask a question. I love hearing from you guys and be sure to check out our latest episode of the Bake Down Podcast. Bye!